started talking about the Great Commission last week when we did part one of the Great Commission and we looked at the command to go. But the Great Commission is not just about going, it is also about making disciples. So part two, my subtitle is Make Disciples. Make Disciples. We go back to our text in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Make disciples. Make disciples. Now, sometimes we simplify the Great Commission as go and win souls, or soul winning, or people uh, giving their lives to Christ, people getting born again, people receiving salvation. That is part of it. But if you just look at the text, that is not where Jesus is ending. Jesus says the Great Commission is about making disciples. Not just winning souls, but making disciples. That, that should be the desire of every Christian. Not just to be born again, but to become a disciple of Jesus. And it should be the desire of every church, not just to get people saved and born again, but people becoming disciples. Making of disciples is at the heart of the Great Commission. And that's what I'm going to emphasize on uh, in my message today. Many times, you know, uh, and we've gotten used to it uh, where um, people come to Christ, people get saved, people respond to an altar call, they say a prayer, and many times we think, oh, that is the end. But we've also seen a lot of people who make that prayer come, uh, sometimes go to the front, sometimes lift up their hands, whatever, but that's the end of their journey. It, nothing else happens. The Great Commission is not just about people getting their hands lifted up but there has to be discipleship making. So let me start by defining what a disciple is. A disciple simply is a person who is a follower of Christ. A person who is a follower of Christ. Now the word disciple can be used in two ways. We can use it in describing a person, that is the person who is a disciple, we can also use it to define an activity, something that we do. So God wants people to become disciples, but discipleship is not an instant thing. So a disciple is a follower of Christ. What about discipleship, the, the means of making a person a disciple. What does it mean? And this is my definition of discipleship. It is the process of learning the teachings of Jesus, following after his example, and living out his life through the power of the Holy Spirit. Discipleship, therefore, is a process. It is the lifetime, and it must be the lifetime mission of every Christian and of every church. It's a process of learning the teachings of Jesus and following after his example. Discipleship is also about turning our lives and our world around through Christ. It's about Change. It is about transformation, turning our lives around, turning our world around. Now, if you notice that the, the ministry of Jesus began with repent, 
He called people to repent. That means to have a radical change of mind that results in a radical change of life. Christianity is more than church attendance. You know that. Christianity is more than saying a prayer in church. Christianity is more than dressing nicely to come to church, and I love the fact that you dress nicely to come to church, but Christianity is more than that. It is about discipleship. Everybody say discipleship. And so today I'm going to uh, go on to teach about uh, how that is done, what, what, what is entailed in the process of discipleship. And to learn that we have to go back to Jesus himself in the same book of Matthew, in chapter number four, we see Jesus calling his first disciples. And we want to look at what he told them to do and what discipleship should mean to us. Matthew chapter four, verse 18 to 20. And Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. This is what Jesus wants from each one of us. This is what Jesus says we should go to the nations to announce. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So in this passage, there is a pattern of discipleship that I'm going to talk about. And there are three main things I'm going to highlight. The first one is leaving. A disciple is a person who leaves. It's like a person going on a pilgrimage or a person going on a journey. You don't go on a journey by staying in the same place. I know that in this modern time, we travel by being in the same place. We call it virtual travel. You know, people can, can be in Ghana and, and be in other parts of the world and, and even take pictures as if they are in New York just by superimposing or putting a background of Times Square behind their picture uh, and, and, and all of a sudden, the, the person uh, takes a picture as if they are in New York. That is virtual. You didn't go anywhere. And definitely, you are not in Times Square. All right? So when, when we leave, when he says, when the, the Bible says Peter left, they didn't leave by staying. They left by leaving. They had to leave. They had to take a step. The Christian life, discipleship, it's about movement. It's about changing. It's about uh, uh, moving from where you are. It's a pilgrimage. So anytime we become Christians, we have to understand that we're going to leave. We're going to leave something behind, and we're going to leave towards something. And leaving is based on two things, responding to the call of Jesus Christ. We respond and we leave. Just think of it. If I call you by name, if I call anybody in this audience and I say, uh, so and so, come, I'm calling you. You don't sit and say, thank you, sir, and stay where you are. If I'm calling you, you have to get up from your chair and you have to move. That's, so when God is calling us or when Christ calls us, we have to get up. We have to move. We don't have to be like the little child who is deeply watching uh, a nice uh, cartoon on the TV. And these days, that's the big problem for all parents. Either on their phone, on their iPad, hijack your iPad, or they've hijacked the TV. And they are watching uh, other, uh, uh, which one is that? Uh, all of those things they watch. Uh, and, 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 uh, and they are so glued. And these days when the kids are watching the, 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 the TV or they're on the iPad, they are so glued, the whole attention is on it. And, and the mother calls and says, hey, John. He says, yes, mommy. Come and eat. Dinner is ready. I'm coming, mommy. 
and he's still on the, on the iPad. He's still in front of the TV. Uh, and, and Johnny, yes, come and eat. I'm coming. But he never moves. A lot of Christians are like that. God calls you and you say, yes, Lord, come. I'm coming. But we never move. We never move. Many respond to their name, but they don't respond to the assignment. When God is calling us, when, when Jesus says, come, he doesn't want you to say, yes, Lord, I'm coming. And meanwhile, you're deeply engrossed in doing something. Can you imagine Peter and Andrew? Jesus says, follow me, come and follow me. They say, yes, Lord, and they still go fishing. But that's what we're doing. We respond to the name, but we don't respond to the movement. And there are a lot of Christians who have responded by name to the Lord, but there is no shift of location. We have to respond to the call, but that responding is not just answering to a name, it is moving. Discipleship is about responding and moving. It is also about turning away from the world. Peter and Andrew turned away from the world they knew, what they were familiar with. We cannot love the world and Christ at the same time. Because there has to be a turning away. You know, I've said many times that Africa has become the center of Christianity in the world. Missiologists say that Africa is the center of Christianity now in the world. The largest number of people are becoming Christians in Africa. The largest churches are being built in Africa. Christianity is a buzz on our continent. But the question we have to ask is, are we leaving anything? Or we are just responding to Christian by name, but there is no departure from anything. Because if we're going to be disciples of Jesus, we don't just have to say, yes, Lord, give me blessing, give me money, double, double, breakthrough, favor. That is all something, that is all something. 